Hey, welcome to Faith After Mormonism. And I'm in the studio today with Mary Jane, and we're going to talk about missionaries and the difference between Mormon missionaries and traditional Christian missionaries. And hopefully this is helpful to you to kind of understand what's going on maybe in the church that, that you might try out or that you might be attending. So, Mary Jane, you were a, a Mormon missionary, yeah, weren't you? Yeah, that's okay. right. When I turned 21, a really long time ago, I went on a Mormon mission to England, to okay. London. So you have that perspective, but you, but you also serve as a Christian missionary now yeah. at this stage in your life. So I, I thought it was interesting to talk about, you know, some of the differences between um, the kind of the way the two groups use the, use the words. Yeah. And so, uh, first of all, just as a background, before we get into the points, mm -hmm. um, have you noticed, like, how do Mormons understand the idea of Christian missionaries? Like, how have they understood you, yeah. for example? It's, it's difficult. I find myself not even defining myself as a missionary okay. because it immediately sets up an idea like in my family's head of what a missionary is mm -hmm. and they're confused immediately mm -hmm. like where are you going to go and for how long and that kind of thing and so I try to identify it really as something different than missionary because it mm -hmm. doesn't Compute. Right, for them, yeah. yeah. So let's talk about that a little bit. You mentioned they want to know how long you're going to be gone. Yeah. So one of the differences is this idea of there's a term. There's a mm -hmm. certain term that's, mm -hmm. you know, that you serve. Explain, you know, kind yeah. of how it works in both yeah. worlds. Yeah. yeah. So when I went, um, sister missionaries had to be 21, mm -hmm. and you went for a year and a half, and it was a term, and you were, it was separated from your life. You were like an interruption from your regular life uh -huh. and from your family and friends. Right. You're kind of mm -hmm. removed and placed someplace else for a term, for a purpose, for right. a 24-7 It's 24 so, yeah. so, but you do it and then you check the box and you never do it again, right? I mean, right. it wouldn't right. go three years later or five years right. later and say, I'm going to do another year and a half. Right. right. Unless you went with your spouse or did some other thing. Kind of, yeah, retired. Kind of mission, so, yeah. Yeah, it was it was a check done, and um, and with me now, it's more of a vocation. It's a choice, okay. and and it is and it is a sacrifice. I left a very high paying job, and and um, I and, and it's a service. It's what I do all the time, every day. But I still it's within my life, so right, right. it's not always 24 7 I have to have boundaries on that right, so sure. that I can spend time with family and friends and, and yeah. going to church and doing things my own growth right as a, as a yeah. human you know yeah as a follower of Christ so that kind of brings up a second point that's worth talking about is the LDS mission is pretty structured and rigid Mm -hmm. So how does that compare with, I mean, you've seen both sides. Yeah. So give us a, an idea. Um, yeah, there's, the LDS mission is very structured. You have a handbook and times when you wake up and times when you go to bed and times when you can wash your clothes. It's very structured and regimented and controlled. It's very, very controlled and you report to people. You're always with somebody mm. and accountability for right. accountability and um, it's not it's not it's not real life it's I mean, not real life yeah, really. it's really yeah. artificial it yeah. is it's and it's a time and it's seen as service and yeah. and um, the times I felt really like I was serving were that a couple of hours a week where I could do volunteer work and serve um, elderly or serve mm -hmm. the disabled or do that kind of service and that's when it felt like service to me. Those were the times I felt authentic in right. serving right. God. Right. But, but serving now as a missionary or a minister, or however you frame it to your family, whatever, um, it's just like an integrated part of your whole life. Yeah. It's not like it's not like you, you change your persona right. or you change, right. you know, um, it's not like yeah. living in boot camp all the time, right? No, you, right. Yeah. And I am endorsed by a mission sending agency. So and there I is have accountability, to, yeah, right? Yeah, there's okay. accountability, and I have to live within that yeah. framework and um, and 
that they would expect me to as a representative of them, sure. as a representative of, of Jesus. And so there's that framework. And um, certain things um, required that I'm expected sure. to be doing. But it is just my life. And with me, mm -hmm. I'm, um, I don't have another other teams around me. So it's really up to me and the accountability people that I choose, like right. in my home church. Right. And um, yeah, it's, it's who I am. Right. It's my whole life. Right. That, that's a so, really good point. Yeah. And so now as a missionary, you said, you, you know, you left a well-paying job, but now how do you get funded and how's yeah. the funding, how does that compare with LDS missionaries and how they get funded. Yeah. So um, when I was an LDS missionary, uh, my family committed to support me. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't know exactly how it works now. It's something in between. Right. Um, but you either had to raise the money yourself or your family would pay mm -hmm. the bills. Mm -hmm. And as a, as a Christian missionary, it's um, you're expected to... Um, raise support, find people who value what you're doing mm -hmm. or behind you, um, and raise support from individuals and churches. Mm -hmm. So it's approaching people, telling them what's going on. That also brings a partnership and okay. more accountability. They right. become partners with right. you, and you. Um, I have a, a quarterly newsletter that mm -hmm. I send updating what's, what's going on and what's happening and right. how they can pray for me. And they actually support me financially. So they mm -hmm. send either monthly or yearly or mm -hmm. one-time um, support, financial support to the mission agency. And then the mission agency pays me, right. a, pays me a salary out right. of that. Yeah. yeah. That make, it, I mean, I can see if you were going to be gone a year and a half or two years, you could save money to do that. Yeah. Your family could yeah. whatever. But since yeah. it's a vocation and, yeah. and you're just doing it as a way of life, you know, how do you save up yeah. your money to do yeah. that? Yeah. You need the partnership right. of people who care about what you're doing and who believe yeah. in you and who God has spoke to them to, yeah. to, to be involved in that. Yeah. So it's really, that's a different model. Yeah. It is a different model. And it's something I think that Christians who understand it, they set aside money to mm -hmm. do that. They yeah. pay maybe tithes and offerings to church, mm -hmm. but they also want to support other ministries. Right. Absolutely. So, okay, well, that's really interesting. Yeah, yeah. Hey, thanks for watching this today. I hope that helps you as you're transitioning out of Mormonism to really understand when Christians talk about missionaries and missionary work that it's a little bit different and maybe sometimes a lot different than what you were used to hearing about in the LDS Church. So hopefully that's instructive for you today. Hey, thanks for watching.